Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to wherever you are in the world. I'm Luan and I will be presenting to you today. I am from Cape Town in South Africa where it is not so sunny, a bit rainy. I hope you've got better weather wherever you are. It would be wonderful to hear where you are today, so please say hello in the chat. Those of you who are here every week, you know exactly what to do. And those of you who have joined for the very first time, on your screen, chat function, tell us your name and tell us where you are. And in the meantime, of course, I will tell you a little bit about me and also today's webinar. So as mentioned, my name is Luan. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, and I have been a teacher for over 15 years and also a teacher trainer for the TEFL Academy for a good number of years. I'm also um, an online English teacher, an examiner. So as you can hear, busy but never ever bored. This is the, the one industry where you can be working right through the year, 24 seven if you wish, but yes, a busy, busy, buzzing industry. So you've chosen well and welcome to today's webinar. So we've got people saying hello from all over. I've just quickly had a look and we have visitors from Belgium. We have viewers from South Africa, hello to you. And also from Milan, hello. And I think it's Fording Bridge in the UK. Good afternoon to you and hello to Italy and a very showery UK, well, here we go. Same, same. <laughs> and then also Oxford, UK, um, Heidelberg in Gauteng, South Africa. Wow, just people watching from all over. And I keep saying week after week that that's the beauty of TEFL, that not only do you connect with students from all over the world, but also teachers from all over the world. It is such an international industry and it's so exciting. But today's webinar is something very, very particular, something that um, lots of teachers are tentative about because they're not sure whether they can teach business English. As you can see, that's what our topic is about today. But today we're going to look at what business English entails and just help you see that with your TEFL, you can teach business English if you wish. So let's have a quick look at what's going to happen today, but also just a little bit about um, the webinar itself, the structure. I will be presenting to you for the first 30 minutes or so, and thereafter I will open up Q&A um, where you are more than welcome to ask your questions about today's topic. Questions about other topics or assignments and so forth, those can be sent to tutor support via the ticket system, and we will be more than happy to assist you with those on tutor support. Today's webinar, only the topic of business English will be addressed in Q&A a little bit later on. Also, just something that I think I'd appreciate is that if you could hold on to those questions until I open up Q&A and then type them. Because what happens is if you type them very early on, I might miss them. And of course, I want to be able to answer every single question of yours. So please, if you think of something, jot it down. And when I open up Q&A, please ask, because of course we would like to help everybody today. Okay, so let's get straight into it. As mentioned, the topic is business English, something very specific, but something so attainable just with your TEFL certificate. So let's have a look at exactly what we'll be discussing throughout this webinar. So we will be looking at what business English is, a definition, something that just helps you understand what the subject entails. We also look at who wants to learn business English. I think this is so useful. It helps us see who we're targeting these lessons at. And then also who can teach business English and what you need in order to teach business English. And then finally, um, what business English entails. We'll be looking at it in a bit more detail so that you can understand exactly what you'll be able to, uh, what you'll be teaching. All right, also we'll be looking at the advantages and challenges of teaching business English um, and also career opportunities that you can explore um, once you are 
you know, equipped to not only teach English, but business English, and then where to find resources, because there are so many out there, great resources, and then also, you know, not so much. So we're going to look at what makes a great resource and where we can find some of these. And then also, of course, a little bit about our business English course at the TEFL Academy, because lots of you who are doing our level five or our blended courses, you might have access to um, the top-up courses, one of which um, includes business English. So that is certainly something that you can absolutely explore with your TEFL certificate. All right, so let's have a look at what business English is, right? So you see this little acronym here, ESP. So business English is part of what is known as English for specific purposes. That's what ESP stands for. And in other words, this it's specifically designed to meet the needs or specific needs of the students. So as you can see, when you start teaching English, I'm sure you're looking at a, what you've got in your mind is a general English class, right? So you've got students from all walks of life or maybe monolingual, um, but you've got students who just want to improve their business, I'm sorry, their English skills in general. But the business English class looks a little bit different. The motivation is different. The reason for taking the class is different. So that brings us to the very next topic, who wants to learn business English, right? So when you picture your class, as mentioned earlier, most of us tend to picture a general English class, right? But a business English class or business English students are generally those who want to conduct or would like to conduct business with English speaking companies or you who use English as a shared language with companies outside the Anglosphere. Many job seekers are also interested in learning business English. Um, in general, the focus is much less um, on grammar, but rather on specific skills, language and vocabulary, phrases that they would use in business, vocabulary that is useful, rather than grammar lessons. So you can already see the differences starting to show between you know, your general English and your ESP specifically business English. So business English is not necessarily for business people conducting business within English speaking countries. Um, business English is also known as a lingua franca, a common language between countries where languages are sp where different languages are spoken, for example, uh, France and China. This is because English has already established itself as the language of international business and technology. So really honing those business English skills, that's really popular with students and job seekers around the world. Because if you look at the international business scene, right? Um, so many students that maybe enter companies in one country will have to communicate with speakers in another country. They might not speak the, country, the, the language of that country, but there's this common thread running through, and that's English, that lingua franca, right? And that is exactly what business English is and exactly what you're able to teach. And that brings us to our very next point, right? Who can teach business English. So if you think about business English, you might think, oh, I need to understand business. Um, I need to be able to, maybe I need to be a business person, or maybe I need to have studied business. Well, I'm really going to highlight all the various skills needed for business um, te business English teaching, and then you'll see you're sitting on so many of them already. So as you probably know by now, there are many different situations you could find yourself teaching if you're a TEFL teacher. You might choose to teach English as a foreign language to a specific age group, like kindergarten or teens or adults, or your school might ask you to teach a specific class on top of your usual classes. And that might be English for academic purposes or exam classes like those Cambridge courses. So, you know, where you end up, I mean, there are so many possibilities, right? And while most of these classes are doable with a bit of research and preparation, there is one class, of course, that can strike fear into the hearts of even the most experienced EFL teacher, and that's business English. So a very common question we get asked at the TEFL Academy every day is, 
Can I teach business English if I have no business experience? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. So if you think about it, we often, as teachers, we often teach topics that we have no knowledge about, right? Um, the environment, maybe a specific um, field in global warming, technology, medicine, but we don't question our ability to do that. Business English, though, seems to be so foreign, so unknown, that many teachers don't believe that they can teach it, even though they absolutely can. Now that you know that as a TEFL qualified teacher, you can teach business English, let's have a deeper look at what business English entails, because it's, you know, I know you're some telling you you can do it, but I'm not going to tell you exactly what it entails. Right, so... In the next couple of slides, take notes, follow along, write down those questions if you think of any, because some good stuff coming your way. Right, so what does business English entail? So earlier we looked at the definition of business English. We looked at the kind of student who wants to learn business English. And we also, we've decided that as TEPL teachers, we can absolutely teach business English. So now we're going to look and what it entails, right? So your business English class will depend entirely on your student. You may be teaching a team of accountants from Hong Kong, a CFO from France, a human resources department at a German company. Um, each class has their own needs and they might not be exactly what you think. So the usual topics for a business English class are and now take some notes. And remember, you can rewatch this webinar as many times as you need to. So if you miss anything, it's all in the webinar. So we're looking at students who want to give presentations, right? So at their companies, at their jobs, they need to maybe deliver a presentation in English. And if English is not their first language, well, this, this might be quite daunting, quite overwhelming for them. They maybe need to write emails to customers in English chatting with foreign colleagues, talking to customers on the telephone, writing emails to international colleagues, um, effectively participating at an international conference, giving a presentation to potential customers. So, you know, that sales pitch, not only presentations from one colleague to another, but actually having to sell a product or a concept. So these are all facets of English or business English that your students may want to um, strengthen. And another one is engaging in small talk. Think about it at a conference. Um, in addition to the business that they'll be discussing, yeah, they also want to make a, a bit of conversation with their peers or their colleagues. So small talk, believe it or not, can take up a whole lesson, if not three or four. And then also a job interview, how to have a job interview at an English company or at an English speaking company. Maybe they are the ones that have to conduct the interview, um, negotiating contracts, presenting contracts, making suggestions for a project that they're working on, um, debating topics at a meeting or just how to participate in meetings. And then also dealing politely with customers and customer complaints, right? I feel like we all need a little bit of guidance there. So more so our students who are not confident, maybe entirely in the English language, dealing with potential client issues may also be something that they really want to focus on. So as you can see, I mean, it took up two slides what business English teaching entails. So there's so much you can address. And there's one way to get started. And we're going to look at that a little bit later on in our presentation. Right. Um, so when you have a brand new um, group of students, as mentioned earlier, your classes will depend entirely on your students, what they require, the specific topics related to their career, um, specific term terminology related to a particular business or an aspect of business, paperwork, um, for a specific job role or communication skills. So surprisingly, you may be asked not to teach anything 
business related, but focus more on the social communication side of things. Many business people need to communicate regularly with people from other countries using English as their language of communication. So they need to be able to have small talk and chat in social settings as well as communicate in a business context. A context and also there's that intercultural exchanges the body language in meetings those are all things that we address when teaching business English so as mentioned I was going to tell you how we get started and we're going to do that right now so as mentioned earlier your lesson is again your lessons are going to be very much based on what your students need. That word need jumps out at us immediately, right? So the very first thing that I suggest you do and that our course content suggests you do also is a needs analysis, right? So a needs analysis will give you the, fa the most fantastic jumping off point. Find out what your students really want to achieve and when would they need to use the English that you're about to teach them. So more and more emphasis is being placed on the, on the student-centered classroom, and for good reason, right? So the students and their needs should be the focus of the classroom, the lesson. And this really should be reflected in the content, the style of the lessons, the activities that you include. In other words, it's really vital to find out what your students need in order to plan appropriately and also make their lessons really relevant to them, specifically tailored for them. I think that this gives them such a great feeling when they're sitting in a lesson and they can hear what you're bringing across has been specifically created for them. So creating a needs analysis is that very first step to finding out exactly what your students need. A needs analysis is a useful tool um, to find out a whole range of information which will help inform your decisions related to the class. This needs analysis can be carried out simply through a questionnaire. I like doing it that way. Using written prompts for a written exercise or a class discussion. However it's done, it needs to include certain information and some important questions to ask in your needs analysis is do you ever talk um, on the phone in English? What do you find challenging about learning English um, and speaking English? Do you speak English more often with native or non-native speakers? Do you often use English um, at work or in your leisure time? And then some questions like who, what, which, you know, find out um, more about their English experience through, through questions like these. Um, and also think about um, what they need English for maybe in terms of meetings and conferences. So do you need to know English to use in meetings um, at uh, expos or exhibitions or conferences? Do you need to speak English to other colleagues? Have you studied English in the past for how long? And who do you usually speak English to? Two. So these are just a few questions that you can include in your needs analysis. I mean, heck, include them all, because I think that the answer student, students give, very often the questions might seem a, li a little repetitive, but you will really, trust me, you'll get so much good information using these repetitive questions and a well-rounded idea of exactly what your students need going forward. And that makes your planning so much easier. Think about it this way, jumping in, starting to plan lessons without a needs analysis is really like driving in the dark. You won't know where you're going. So needs analysis, first thing you do. And even though this webinar is about business English today, even if you are teaching online or privately, the first thing you should do with any student, any new student is a needs analysis. So more so with the business English student, right? And then also create a friendly atmosphere in the classroom. You know, we tend to think that, okay, they're business students, um, that everything needs to be business-like. 
from what you say to what you wear to how you behave. And yes, you do want to be professional. You want to look professional. You want to look presentable. But, and you want to behave in that way. But also remember that business English students also need motivation and encouragement. A group of managers, for example, returning from a conference will need a trainer with a bit of energy, possibly some humor. So increase their interaction with each other and reduce your teacher talking time. Make sure to include lots of speaking time, conversation um, in their lesson so that there are regular intervals of communication throughout. So as mentioned, yes, you want to look professional, you want to look presentable and act, behave in that way, but they also need a bit of downtime, a bit of humor in the classroom. This is something very important to remember. Just because they're business students does not mean that the mood or the feeling in your class can't be lighthearted, a happy mood, just to encourage learning and to motivate them. I, I, I think that students tend to learn better when they're having fun or enjoying the lesson. So the very next point is to choose your materials very, very carefully. So authentic materials are vital in the business English class. So authentic materials are things that you can grab, you know, out of a local newspaper or off the internet. So not materials that are created specifically for English lessons, but materials that first language um, speakers would just pick up to read for information, to read for entertainment. That's what authentic materials include, right? So um, authentic materials tend to create authentic situations and the content of your lesson becomes very relatable. However, your biggest resource, as mentioned earlier, is your students. Allow them to bring in their own materials. This could be leaflets, emails, PowerPoint presentations that they've done, reports that they've attempted to write or found useful. You could also use their own materials to create worksheets if you've got the time. Do remember, however, that because students are constantly missing in the lessons, <laughs> this sounds a bit strange, but business comes first. So very often you might have a student not attending, you know, then the very next lesson, a different student's not attending. A student might have to leave in the middle of a lesson. So remember this right? So asking them to bring in their own resources and then basing your entire lesson on this may backfire if some of them don't arrive. It could change the dynamics of the lesson and you must prepare for this, right? The very next point is to be flexible and really try to anticipate problems. But we do this in general English lessons also. So something to remember is that business people can have high expectations. They might ask for classes before they start work, during lunchtime, or at the end of the day when you're ready to wrap up, that's when they want their lesson. And this means that you could end up working very long hours and perhaps starting first thing in the morning and finishing last thing at night. In addition, as mentioned a little earlier, students may cancel at the last minute because of unforeseen problems, Perhaps an important call has come through, an urgent meeting has come up. So teachers need to accept that business comes first. So to reduce the stress, it can be a good idea to negotiate a cancellation policy with the company in advance. Ask them um, to make sure that they inform you at least maybe 24 to 48 hours in advance um, if they're not going to arrive or if students are going to be absent. A further issue might be the numbers of people attending the class, right? So it's not unusual to prepare for a group of six to eight people and only have one or two people show up. So you need to create activities that will work for a one-to-one -one situation also. So don't create le lessons or activities that are only doable for groups or pair work because, as mentioned, you might have just that one student pitching up. Right, and that's what you also need to be prepared for. So those are a few points um, when you get started that you have to consider, that all of us have to consider. And now we're going to look at some lesson planning tips, right? So just like a general English class, you also need to, to plan your lessons for um, business English. So new teachers should not dismiss the possibility 
of teaching English for specific purposes. This could happen. You could be required to cover for an absent or a sick colleague. And if you have come into ESL teaching from a business background, you could be teaching ESP or a business English class sooner than you think. So we really should dispel the myth that says you have to teach business studies when you teach business English. That's not the case. All you'll be required to do is teach English for specific purposes. So you should prepare your ESP lesson plans essentially in the same way that you prepare your general ESL lesson plans, but you should take the following additional points into consideration, right? So the ESP business students should already have a satisfactory command of English. Their primary objective will be to learn how to express themselves in an English speaking environment, such as banking or insurance or finance or accountancy. So you are not to start with absolute beginners or really, really low level students. Business English students already need to be quite comfortable with English so that you can actually teach them this niche area of English. The second thing is you should not attempt to prepare lesson a lesson plan based on the run on you know grammar or solely vocabulary you'll have to base it on those aspects of english that have direct relevance and practical application for business specific business environments example accountancy if you're having serious difficulty designing your lesson plans you should think about talking to an ESP content specialist to assist you or speak to teachers who have actually taught business English before. I find that that is the most useful. I use the other teachers that I work with. I use my colleagues. I often run to them and say, right, what can I do with this class that's really going to get them excited? They might give you advice. Um, they might give you entire lesson plans. Um, and, you know, you can bounce ideas back and forth. So for me personally, I find my fellow teachers to be a fantastic resource. And then also make sure that you research the particular area of business for which you will be teaching English. Look online for some introductory texts or buy a couple of secondhand books to assist you in expressing yourself better. You'll feel a lot more confident um, with this knowledge. I have invested in a few uh, secondhand books business English books. Um, I once had to teach aviation English, so I had to get some resources based on that. I have flown in a plane before, but I've never physically flown an airplane before. And there I was teaching aviation English. So as you can see, you don't need to be a business person to teach business English, just taking you back to that previous point. And then also, your lesson plans should really take into account the characteristics of adult students. For example, incorporate the students' life experiences in your lessons. Uh, make sure that the work is relevant and has specific and immediate applicable goals. Adults are highly motivated. So within reason, your lesson plans should include more challenging work. And also remember, final point, your weekly lesson plans should include practice in the use of English in the following topics. So you're looking at business correspondence, you're looking at negotiations, specialized vocabulary, listening, especially telephone and video conferencing and small talk. These topics are an integral part of every business environment. So we've actually gone into quite a few details there about lesson planning. So now we're going to look at the advantages of teaching business English. And there are so many, in my opinion. I will be honest. I will tell you the truth right now. When I started teaching, when I was newly TEFL certified, I was not that interested in teaching business English. I really thought that I couldn't do it. I thought that having just my TEFL wasn't enough. The idea of business English almost seemed unachievable for me and maybe not that exciting. And as soon as I realized that I had everything, um, all the tools in my toolbox in order to teach business English, well, there I went. And now the advantages for me are endless. But let's look at a few today, right? So the very first advantage that I can think of is the flexibility. So um, it gives teachers um, 
you know, that flexibility because lessons can take place in many different formats. For example, a teacher can have one-to-one -one classes, a company group where the teacher gives lessons at the company during work hours or after work, and in school groups. It gives the teacher a lot of variety and more flexibility and fantastic experience, I think, in many different scenarios. Another advantage is um, that you as a teacher can learn a lot from your students, right? About the business world, what it looks like. You get so much new material from your existing Business English students for upcoming Business English students. So the learning is just this wonderful, rich exchange. And then also there's skills development. Your skills, your abilities as a teacher can be developed seeing as your students might be required to perform tasks like giving presentations or using particular online applications. I know I've learned so much from my students. And then also your language skills develop. Believe it or not, you don't stop learning English as a teacher. So your language knowledge can grow dramatically because you're required to function in a professional context. And one last point to mention is that the teacher does not have to deal with discipline issues that often. So students are relatively motivated and professional. Um, so, you know, it's not that common that you have to deal with deep discipline issues or, you know, have to confront a student about, you know, unacceptable behavior. This is not that common. As a, a general English teacher teaching maybe younger learners, you might experience that, but not so much in the business context. And finally, something that is worth adding is that your creativity really skyrockets. I mean, this develops when you need to design materials specifically aimed um, at this particular group. So really, I think that the word here is upskill. You really do upskill yourself. But we also have to look at some of the challenges of teaching business English. I don't want to say disadvantages. We'll call them challenges, right? So as mentioned earlier, students might want lessons in the evening. So after your students have had a long day at work, they come in tired. And as a teacher, you have to compromise by using less challenging materials or even doing something entirely different um, to what you planned. You know, when you read the room and you read the energy levels, you might have to take it down a notch. And this is sometimes difficult to adjust on your feet, but you'll get there. Secondly, as mentioned earlier, too, attendance could be problematic because your students, um, you know, they might have conferences, they might have business trips, they might be pulled out of the lesson at any given time when a problem arises. So these are all issues that you might have to deal with, and this might lead to low attendance at times. And as mentioned, again, this is where your flexibility comes in, because you're going to have to last minute adjust things a little bit. Thirdly, if you're teaching in groups, um, mixed level classes can be an issue. So as mentioned earlier, yes, your students really should have a nice strong command of the English language, but it's not always the case. You often have maybe an advanced student and an intermediate student. Now, if you know anything about the CEFR levels, right, there's a couple of levels between those two levels from lower intermediate, upper intermediate, then you have early advanced, advanced proficiency level. I mean, there's a lot to work with there. So that could be a problem, that l that mixed language ability scenario. Um, and also in terms of age, in such cases, the teacher will have to maybe balance things by challenging the stronger students so that they don't get bored. Um, and at the same time, making sure that the the less strong or the weaker students are feeling stimulated and like they're learning something also. So there's a little, it's a bit of a balancing act but it is something, as mentioned earlier, that really upskills you as a teacher. And finally, we're talking about challenges. Um, with group classes, it could be a little bit problematic, and this is nothing, um, no reflection on your teaching or what you've planned, but you might have managers and non-managerial staff in the same group. And this can really influence your group dynamic. It could influence it 
positively, but in most cases, it does cause a little bit of awkwardness. And as the teacher, you'll have to keep your eye on this and make sure that you are proactive and that learning English is the objective. Remember, the classroom is also very much the environment where students uh, communicate and exchange ideas and respond to material with ideas and thoughts and personal experiences. And they might not be as forthcoming when there are managerial staff um, present. So that might be a little bit of an issue. But like we said, you've got to be proactive, keep your eye on this and keep everyone's goals, you know, on the same, the, the same objective to learn English, to master those communication skills. Right. So the very next thing we're going to look at is career opportunities. So for business English teachers, I mean, there are so many opportunities. And if you think about the 1.5 billion, billion with a B, people wanting to learn English right now, the career opportunities are endless. Once you've completed your TEPL course and perhaps our teaching English, our teaching business English course, you'll be qualified to teach business English internationally. So in a range of educational settings, we're looking at things like online, corporate institutions, private one-to-one -one, uh, tuition. There's quite a lot of work there. And every student is different. So you might have one more students asking for one-to-one -one lessons, um, especially those students who want to really fine-tune job interview skills. The settings could differ quite vastly. From one, from one situation to the next. So again, we're looking at online, corporate, and private. So for these students that you'll be teaching, obviously you might have to come up with quite a few resources by yourself. Unless you find the perfect teaching English business course book, you're having to maybe look for resources out there, right? So the first place to start, of course, is our business English uh, teaching business English course at the Temple Academy. It's really quite useful because there is so much information, right? But you do not need to know. Think about all the terminology of business English. You don't need to know all the terminology relating to business. Well, you do, <laughs> but you can learn that. You don't need to know it before you start teaching business English. You can learn as you prepare for lessons. You also do not need to know exactly how a particular business or commerce in general works. Your business English learners will be so varied that there is no way one person can know everything there is to know about all aspects of business English. So I think you can exhale at this point, right? So outside of our teaching business English course, in company, is, an, is one of the most popular course books for teaching business English. And the British Council and One Stop English offer fantastic online resources for business English classes. So many of these um, resources even have full lesson plans. Of course, you need to tweak and revise lesson plans to make it your own, but they have great starter packs for teachers looking to teach business English. And once you have the right resources, you can make sure that you are prepared adequately to really, really make a success of your lessons and actually enjoy the process while you're at it. I know I do. All right. So I mentioned earlier authentic material. Now remember, authentic material um, includes things like your newspaper articles, your blogs, your TED Talks, things that you can listen to. So non-course book and non-English lesson based content. So on the screen, you'll see examples like articles from the New York Times or any uh, local newspaper, radio business reports like the BBC. You're looking at companies annual reports. These are often available online. Um, a TED Talk, I use these all the time. The students' own material, remember I mentioned to you earlier, you could ask them to bring in emails that they've written or that they've received. Um, you know, you can use pie charts, you can use YouTube videos um, about business. So there are just so, so many um, 
fantastic resources out there. A friend of mine actually listens to a financial coach and receives videos on a weekly basis. And I thought, hmm, that could be really nice material for my business English class. So there you go. Always material available online, in newspapers, and so on. Lots and lots of resources out there. Right. So as mentioned earlier, we also have our own Teaching Business English course. And this webinar is not to sell you the course. For many of you, this course is available and embedded within your um, in your main course that you're doing or as an additional top up. So look into that. Um, but our Business English um, course, if you're watching this webinar, the chances are that you've already enrolled or that you're looking to enroll. And if you've not yet done so, let me tell you a little bit about it. So the online course consists of three mandatory units. Each unit is test assessed online. And there is an end of course assignment if you take the course separately from the main course. So the three units are as follows. There's an overview of teaching business English, and this is quite useful. And then there are uh, there's a unit based on techniques and activities for teaching business skills. And then there's also a unit that I think is so necessary, and that's the intercultural awareness unit. And this is where you're looking at teaching receptive and productive skills. So this course is really designed to train teachers and aspiring teachers how to teach business English. Now, that's not to say you need the course or, or the certificate in order to teach business English, but it really does help you fine tune your skills and helps you really find fantastic resources out there to build really great work schemes for your students. And if you think about it, in our increasingly globalized world, English plays a very important role. It is by far the most dominant language of business and fluency, and is essential really for anyone seeking to join the global workforce. International companies um, are often using, or they use English as a shared language to conduct business between countries where English is not the official language. Um, for example, as we mentioned earlier, between China and Germany. And because of this, there is a really high demand for business English teachers, which is great news for you and me, right? And the market is likely to in increase in the future. So, you know, we've looked at business English, we've looked at, um, defining business English, how it's used, the purpose behind it. We've looked at some of the activities in our course um, designed to give you that really hands-on knowledge about the needs and expectations of your future business English students and how to address them in your teaching, right? So when you're looking at the online course, for example, you're going to be working your way through the course and then you're going to complete the interactive activities that are presented to you on screen all quite self-explanatory. Some instructions are given for the activity, but how they fu function, it's pretty standard. And then, as mentioned before, you'll write a test at the end of every unit. And if you have done the Teaching Business English course separately from our main TEFL course, yes, of course, you'll need to complete the assignment. If, however, your course is accessed as a top-up through your main TEFL course, then you'll merely need to complete the unit tests and enjoy the content, but you will not need to submit an assignment. I've done these myself, these activities, and they're really enjoyable and a great way to revise what you've learned. So, you know, we've all, we've discussed business English. I've had my personal experiences with business English. I have taught business English students from all over the world, and it's a really, really great experience. I've had a group of engineers um, in the oil industry from Angola, I have a business English student that I teach from Brazil online. I've had a, des a designer um, come to South Africa and she had a thriving design business, but she really wanted to expand. So we looked at design business English. Um, I mean, there are so many avenues you can explore and they're all different. They're all exciting. But at the end of the day, with your TEFL certificate, you have the ability to teach business English. So to conclude, business is not boring. There is something new to learn every day as a teacher and your students will walk away feeling enriched because of the English they've acquired. Um, and they, they really value the preparation and the effort 
that you put into your lessons. And they're, they're more confident at the end of the process to conduct business in English. So I really hope this webinar has helped you and given you the motivation to teach business English with confidence. And if you're thinking about doing our business English course, do not hesitate, not even for a second, enroll today. It's that easy. It's that immediate and you can get cracking. If you're already doing our business course, enjoy. And remember to reach out if anything is unclear. Right, so now we've got some time left for Q&A. A little bit shorter than usual, but there was a lot to cover. So we will absolutely just wrap up quickly. Remember going forward to do your homework before your students arrive. Go with the flow, but keep an eye on the aims of the lesson and revise the aims of the lesson before and after. And also have boundaries. You're teaching adults and you as a teacher also needs to feel comfortable. Right, so before we get cracking with Q&A, please remember that these webinars are all available on our YouTube channel. Um, and if you've missed part of this one or if there are other webinars that you like to explore, just go onto the YouTube channel and actually just peruse, go through and watch and re-watch whatever it is you need, right? And if you can't find the uh, webinar channel, the YouTube channel, send us a ticket at you to support. And of course, we'll send you the links that you can have some fun with these webinars. All right, so now, as promised, it's Q&A time. And of course, I am ready to answer any questions that you might have about Business English. So just a reminder that you've got to type your questions into the chat function. I will get to as many of those as I can. Um, but I will be answering questions that are very particular um, to the topic today. So only Business English questions are going to be addressed and answered as mentioned and, and as we always say of course you're welcome to send any other questions to tutor support and we'll answer them as soon as possible so now's your time please type your questions into the chat function it might be a question about today's webinar it might be a question about business english teaching it might be a question about experiences that I've had, <laughs> experiences that you've had. It might just be some comments that you'd like to share about your own experiences or if you're doubting your qualifications or your experience, um, please do ask some questions, right? So we've already got, <coughs> excuse me, we already have a question here from Igor. And the question is what, ha um, what happens quite often is the client wants to discuss big business, but struggles with basics. Any hint on how to communicate this? Igor, have you done a needs analysis with this client, right? Because yes, sometimes business English students really want to jump up here when they need to start down here. Remember though that business English students should, the ones we take on as clients, should already have a strong command of the English language. And they're just sort of learning the niche language required for business English communication. So I would say um, a needs analysis is a great way to start. Um, ask them questions about what it is they need to achieve and then base your lessons on that. And every time they want to go off brief or every time they want to introduce something new and maybe to advance for them, remind them of the needs analysis and that you need to cover those aims first. Um, when you say big business, I'm not too sure what you mean, but I'm, I tend to think that it is maybe just um, content that is above their level. Um, if that is not what you're referring to, could you please clarify? But yes, if it is content that is way above their level, remind them of the needs analysis, the topics that you need to cover, bring them back to that. It is that needs analysis is almost like an agreement between you and your students. Your students are telling you this is what I need or what they need, and you're creating lessons to meet those needs. So keep reminding them to stay on route with that needs analysis. That often helps me when my students want to go off the rails. Okay, so we've got a question here from Olga. Hello, Olga. And it is, when is it better to sign on Business English if I just started TEFL level five? Olga, first finish TEFL level five. Please do that first, right? And the reason I'm saying that is because your, um, 
Your TEFL course is your main course. It's going to teach you all the basics of teaching English. So your business English course is really something just to add and complement and supplement that TEFL course. So I would say, Olga, first focus on the, the TEFL, the main TEFL course, because also once you start doing the teaching business English course, there might already be a few uh, terms and a few methodologies mentioned that were already covered in the main TEFL course and then you already know what they mean and then the business English course is going to be a breeze for you so absolutely first focus on your level five and then when you have the energy and the time move on to your business English course that's what I would do all right. So a good question, Vivian. Are there any templates for a needs analysis, either from TEFL or? Yes. So in the business English course, we have an example of a needs analysis questionnaire. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, Vivian, a needs analysis for a business English course versus a general English course, well, the two are going to be very, very similar. What you're trying to find out is, where do you speak English? Who do you speak English to? How much English do you know? Why do you need to speak English? So I would, if, if you can't find something that is specifically been fine-tuned for business English, I would take a needs analysis for a general course and I would just tweak that um, to suit my business English students and you're good to go. That's what I do. All right, any other questions? And some more people have arrived. Welcome. Wow, Argentina and Brazil. I like it. And then also, wow, someone from Finland. That's lovely. Okay, so please send your questions. I've got another one here. Should I show a certificate in English business to work in that field? No, you do not. You absolutely do not need to um, have a business English certificate in order to teach business English. Definitely not, but it absolutely helps you. Um, you know, if you, the, the business English course takes what you've learned in TEFL, your level five or your level three, and it just fine tunes it to business English. It also keeps you on your toes in terms of what business English students are talking about these days. So nope, you do not need to show a certificate, but the course will certainly help you. All right, so a question here from Amber. Is there a high demand field of English teaching? Because I often find online sites are not looking for new tutors. Um, Amber, are you talking about in general for, for jobs or are you specifically asking about business English? If you could just clarify that for me. Mm, question from Carol. Hello, Carol. So nice to hear from you. Absolutely welcome and have a blessed weekend to you too. Enjoy it. All right. Any other questions? Please ask now. I'm here. Make use of me. And then Igor, I take it that that was what you were looking for. You said that the students often want to discuss big business, but struggle with the basics. I'm thinking that your students are aiming for language above their level when they're actually needing to focus on more fundamental stuff. So yeah, absolutely bring them back to that needs analysis. Ah, thank you, I see you've just clarified. Let's put that on the screen. By big business, I mean clients expect sophisticated business topics, management, finances, but they cannot put together a grammatically correct sentence. Right. So, Igor, as we mentioned earlier, and this is not a TEFL Academy um, point, this is something general when teaching business English, is that your students who are too low should first focus on strengthening their general English before they enroll into a business English course with you, for example. So I would say with a student like that, um, firstly, a needs analysis will definitely help you. And secondly, I often turn, um, I don't turn lower level students away, but I often say to students who approach me for business English, 
um, and their level is too low, I say to them, right, I'm going to work with you, absolutely, but I want you to have this and that amount of weeks um, just fine-tuning and, and practicing that general English before we embark on business English because business English is so niche and it's almost built in with high level concepts and vocabulary and structures and phrases and grammar. So for a low level student to want to um, engage in business English topics immediately, it's not always that achievable. So Igor, as we mentioned in this webinar, your business English student should already have a strong command of the English language before they embark on business English. All right. <laughs> right, so I've got a question that I really need to answer. Stephanie asked, according to your experience, how was the first time you, I think you mean you taught business English and what did you teach, right? So I had a group of business people from Turkey and they were um, going to be in our country for a good few weeks and they wanted one teacher only to teach them together with no other students. And these, you know, this is their topic. This is the company they work for, teach. <laughs> so we did the needs analysis. We found out exactly what their levels were. The slightly lower levels had to spend a few weeks in general English first, but we started with the needs analysis. Once we did the needs analysis, we saw, okay, what they want to improve is um, how to engage during a meeting. They wanted to improve telephone skills and also presentations. They wanted to um, really fine tune their presentation skills. So that's where we started, Stephanie. Um, and because they were already at a nice strong level, I didn't need to do tenses and lots of grammar. We could jump straight into business terminology and business vocabulary phrases to use in a presentation. They would put together a little presentation and then deliver that presentation for me later in the classroom. So that's where we started. Your needs analysis and then those few topics that I just mentioned was exactly where I started. It was a fantastic experience, a little daunting at times, but yeah, it was interesting. All right, and then we have a question from Carol. I'm now a uh, I am now TEFL Level 3 certified. Well, congratulations to you. And I took the Business English course with the Academy. I'm now in the process of looking for a job teaching Business English online. Any recommendations? Right, Carol, the very first thing you need to do is update your LinkedIn profile, you create your Facebook page. I know Facebook, I know, right? But you do make so many connections via your Facebook page. So I would say as a Business English teacher and TEFL teacher, First, strength, strengthen all those platforms because that is where I find most of my students find me. They go online, they find my LinkedIn profile, and immediately they contact me for lessons. If, however, you prefer to work for a school, Carol, there are schools out there or platforms where you can put your profile on and you can actually... Um, you know, advertise yourself as a business English teacher and you can have a difference in price uh, from your general English class to your business English class. I would say first update all those public profiles that you've got. Um, look at our jobs board on a daily basis and then also um, those platforms where you can upload your information as a new teacher, specify that you also teach business English. It is something that grabs and creates a bit of a niche for you as well. And you know, I always say it's not about having a wide net, it's about really creating that niche and then those students tend to come. That That's something I've experienced. All right, there are a couple more questions. Yes, and comments, thank you. All right, so an interesting question. Um, hi, Luan. Hi to you. Is it re regard, regard? Not sure. I'm sorry. Um, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Where would you rate teaching English for business for newcomers to teaching, say, compared to teaching children? Is it easier 
or more difficult or the same? I would say that um, it's probably more preparation is required for business English teaching um, because your clients are a bit more discerning. They know what they want. Um, usually they're adults and usually, as mentioned before, they already have quite a strong command of the English language. So they are going to tell you whether a lesson has wasted their time. They're going to tell you if they already know this stuff or, you know, they've learned this before. So they are the slightly more, I'm not going to say it's an unpleasant situation. I've had fantastic experiences in the business English classroom. But yes, they are a more discerning client. So you do need to put a bit more energy into your preparation as opposed to a class with younger learners just wanting to learn general English preparation still, but they are less um, critical <laughs> and they tend to ask less, uh, you know, fewer questions. They're a bit easier. They just want to learn from you. So the, the scenes are quite different. The energy is quite different. And uh, yes, again, just to reiterate, more prep goes into business English. But at the end of the day, equally rewarding, if that makes any sense. Right, I'm just reading some of the comments. A nice one, thank you very much. I have my own business and fully understand the demands of a business, yeah. However, business principles are pretty standard, but industry uh, needs vary, absolutely. I'm pleased that there is a need for business English and how I have so many inquiries every single day for business English and no two people come from the same industry. So you're absolutely right. They differ so much, but yes, you'll be able to teach it all. Because remember, you're not teaching them the fundamentals of their business. You're teaching them the English with which to communicate in their business. And that's why as TEFL teachers, you already have what you need to enjoy this new journey of business English. So I really hope that this webinar has helped you. We've come to the end. Unfortunately, I would love to sit here for another hour and talk to you, but unfortunately we've got to finish. So I really, really hope that it was good for you and that it's enlightened you and motivated you to, um, you know, experiment with business English. And if you are looking to do one of our top up courses and business English is one of your passions, I say go for it as soon as you can. But for those of you still doing the level five course, finish that first and look at the business English course when you're done. You're absolutely welcome. All the thank yous coming in. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend. But before you go, there's something that you've got to do every week for us. And that is to fill in our survey. Remember that the survey helps us create new ideas and content. It helps us create webinars that are just for you and helpful for you. So I've put the link in the chat right now, but I'm also going to display it on the screen in a minute. Please do the survey. Those of you who join every week, thank you. Come again. Those of you who are joined for the first time today, come again and enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. Be safe, be blessed, and we'll see you next time. Bye.